The guy that always gave me the most problems actually was Tracy McGrady. Tracy McGrady? Yeah, yeah. No, Tracy McGrady, the... man. Tracy McGrady with his, you know, he, he had all the skills and all the athleticism. Um, but he was 6'9". What's up guys, Mike here, and did you know that Kobe Bryant is one year older than Tracy McGrady? Did you know that in 2002 and 2003, Kobe Bryant and Tracy McGrady were both named to the first team All-NBA? Did you know that at the age of 34, Kobe Bryant was named to his final first team All-NBA selection? His 11th first team selection in his career, while at the age of 34, Tracy McGrady was retired. At one time in their lives, there was a real discussion between who was better, Kobe Bryant or Tracy McGrady. Kobe retired as a five-time champion, an MVP, and one of the greatest players to ever play the game. T-Mac, on the other hand, retired at the age of 32, retired as a shadow of the player he had once been. So what happened? What caused Tracy McGrady from going from one of the best players in the NBA, a player who had a chance to become one of the best players of all time, to instead one of the most tragic figures in basketball history? Well, today, guys, we are going to look at the career of Tracy McGrady, and I'm going to show you just why Tracy McGrady should should have been an NBA legend. The first two seasons of Tracy McGrady's career were just about as forgettable as you could possibly get. As an 18-year-old lottery pick taken straight from high school, T-Mac spent his first two years in Toronto averaging under 23 minutes per game while scoring less than 10 points a night. But even just watching him at this young age, you could already tell that the seeds were planted for a future NBA star. Because at 6'8", Tracy stood among the tallest shooting guards in NBA history. He was fast. He had a 43 inch vertical leap and he could shoot the basketball. Scratch that, he could both shoot and score the basketball as well as set up his teammates for easy baskets. When it comes down to it, an 18 to 20 year old Tracy McGrady was everything you could ever imagine in a top basketball prospect. In fact, if for some reason we were cloning shooting guards, I would argue very strongly that Tracy McGrady would be the perfect choice. He had the ideal body type, top tier athleticism, and ridiculous natural talent. And then came his third season season in Toronto, where everything seemed to click. Finally receiving good playing time, McGrady averaged over 15 points, 6 rebounds, and 3 assists per game while showing the world that he was just scratching the surface of his potential. And at the time, Toronto Raptors fans could not have been more excited. They had Vince Carter and T-Max seemingly the next 8 to 10 years. Bringing an NBA title to Canada was more than a possibility. But then, Tracy decided to leave for the Orlando Magic. Now before we go any further, I need to remind you guys just how good Tracy McGrady was as a basketball player in his prime. As I've already said, the man was a legitimate rival to Kobe Bryant, and the numbers back this up. Now, in my James Harden video, I talked about just how good James Harden was between the ages of 23 and 26. This is where, as a shooting guard, players really start to hit their prime. In fact, many shooting guards have their best season during this time period. When looking at a list that includes Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade, and Allen Iverson, T-Mac ranks second among these legends in rebounds per game from the ages of 23 to 26. In terms of a assists per game, he ranks fourth, and in terms of points per game, he ranks third. He clearly fits in on this list, he clearly belongs. Which means that from the ages of 23 to 26, Tracy McGrady was clearly set up to establish himself as one of the all-time greatest shooting guards in NBA history. And going even further, let's take a look at the best guard and wing players numbers in the prime season of their career. As you can see, 2003 T-Mac more than holds his own with some of the all-time NBA legends. This list of seven NBA stars has produced 20 five total championships, but somehow McGrady never even made it out of the first round of a single NBA playoff series. How is this possible? Well, T-Mac's career just happened to be dominated by one theme, bad luck. So after three years as a Raptor, T-Mac left his cousin Vince and joined the Orlando Magic. Who can really blame him? He was leaving Canada for America. Just kidding, Canadians. I'm sorry. Anyway, in today's contract rules, this move would not have been possible. Tracy would have been forced to spend at least two more years as a Toronto Raptor, and that would have impacted his career tremendously. Because the season after T-Mac left for Orlando, the Toronto Raptors had one of the best seasons in their franchise history. They finished with a 47-35 and record and lost to the Sixers in seven games in the Eastern Conference semifinals. That Sixers team would go on to reach the NBA Finals and would lose to the Lakers in five games. But here's the thing. In 2001, Tracy would finally realize his full potential as an NBA star. He averaged 27 points per game and led a crappy Orlando Magic team to a first round playoff loss. If the Raptors had superstar T-Mac playing for them in 2001, then they almost certainly would have beaten the Sixers in the Eastern Conference semifinals and reached the NBA Finals for the first time in their franchise history. But 
it didn't happen, thus marking the first mistake slash bad luck that T-Mac encountered in his career. Because when T-Mac fled for the Orlando Magic in the 2001 season, he was supposed to be leaving for greener pastures. That summer, the Magic also signed Grant Hill, an all-around NBA superstar who should have been the perfect wing player to complement McGrady's game. Hill was unselfish and didn't need the ball in his hands the majority of the time to fully impact a game, which meant that McGrady had full reign to dribble the ball the most, to take the most shots, to get the most assists, and still play with one of the best wing players in the NBA. But then, everything went horribly wrong. After signing a massive deal with the Magic, Grant Hill suffered massive injuries. These injuries would cause him to play a grand total of 47 games in the four years that T-Mac played for the Orlando Magic. So instead of playing with another top 10 player in the NBA and potentially competing for NBA championships, Tracy was forced to play with subpar talent and again had no real shot at competing for a title. As the Orlando Magic had no cap space to chase other stars because they were paying Grant Hill tons of money to ride the bench. These Orlando years were McGrady's ultimate prime, a prime that was showcased in 2003 when as a 23 year old he averaged 32 points, 6.5 rebounds, and 5.5 assists a night while dragging the Magic to a first round loss against the Pistons. In this Pistons series, the Pistons were the number one seed in the Eastern Conference while the Magic were the eighth seed, but still the series went to seven games. The reason for this was that Tracy McGrady averaged 32 points, seven rebounds, and five assists while single-handedly keeping his team in the series. He did everything he could here, but still, people remember Tracy McGrady as a playoff loser. And so, already in T-Mac's young career, he suffered through two bouts of horrible luck. By the time he left the Magic in the 2004 season, his seventh in the NBA, Tracy had played with exactly two All-Stars in his entire career. One was Grant Hill, who, as I said, never played really, and the other was, of course, his cousin Vince. Again, whenever anyone talks about LeBron's early years as a Cav, they bring up his lack of talent. But when you compare T-Mac's final years in Orlando to LeBron's final years as a Cavalier, it's very, very close. And finally, we come to Tracy's Houston years. Now remember, T-Mac was traded to Houston in the same year that the team had just landed Dwight Howard. If McGrady had spent the rest of his prime in Orlando, he could have teamed up with Dwight, the perfect center for a player of McGrady's talents. If his back had held up on him as well, we'll get to that, T-Mac would have been the perfect player to lead the Orlando Magic teams that found huge success spreading the floor around Dwight. It's very possible that a player like McGrady would have swung the 2009 finals and won the Orlando Magic their first ever basketball championship. And at the very least, T-Mac would have been a part of teams that won playoff series. But instead, T-Mac ended up in Houston. Now in Houston, Tracy did create some of these signature moments that would end up defining his NBA legacy. Of course, we all remember the time he scored 13 points in 33 seconds to steal a game away from the San Antonio Spurs. Side note, Young Mike actually watched this game live, and I'll always remember this as my first memory of actually watching basketball history unfold before my eyes. Moving on, we'll also remember the Rockets' insane run of 22 wins in a row with a team that was a borderline title contender at best. But what we really need to remember Houston for is the last time that Tracy McGrady took the court as an NBA superstar. His first three seasons as a Rocket were typical T-Mac. He was an all-star, he was regarded as one of the best players in the NBA, and he was still incapable of winning a single playoff series. Call it bad luck, call it whatever you want, but the Houston Rockets were the beginning of the end of the career of Tracy McGrady. Earlier in this video, I hit you with some stats. I showed you how a prime Tracy McGrady was just as good as any of the NBA legends who played on the wing before him. But we're at the point of the video where things go horribly wrong, because when we use the same list of NBA legends and rank them from their stats between the ages of 29 to 32, this is what we get. As you can see, McGrady finishes dead last in every single category except for rebounds, where he finishes second to last. And when looking at the point averages of these players, you can really see just how drastically Tracy fell off. Every player but T-Mac averaged at least 22 points per game during this stretch, while Tracy McGrady and his 32nd year would mark the last time that Tracy McGrady laced up for an NBA regular season game. After that, he was finished. You can now find him discussing the game of basketball on television. So what happened? How did one of the most promising basketball players of all time go from putting up NBA legend type stats to becoming a below average player who was forced to retire at the age of 30? Two. Well, to put it simply, his back gave out on him. His Houston career was plagued with back spasms that constantly flared up and kept him off the court. Despite several treatments from some of the best doctors in the field, these back injuries would stay with him for the rest of his career. On top of this, T-Mac also began to develop problems with his shoulder and knee at seemingly the same time. This led to Tracy undergoing surgery on both his left shoulder and left knee at the end of the 2008 season, which 
eventually led to microfracture surgery on his knee the next season, which eventually led to him never fully regaining his athleticism or playing ability. At the end of the day, his body betrayed him, and Tracy McGrady was forced to retire at 32, which was just way too young. But it wasn't only his injuries that held McGrady back in his career, because by all accounts of people who played with Tracy, who coached him, who were with him on a day-to-day -day basis, t mecs main problem was apparent. He was simply not wired to be an alpha male, to be an NBA superstar, to be a leader a team needs to win an NBA championship. When asked who the leader was on the Houston Rockets 22 game win streak, Houston GM Daryl Morey replied with probably Chuck Hayes. Chuck Hayes? A career backup center, a player who made it to the NBA with hard work and determination, who in his best moments still never had an ounce of the talent that Tracy McGrady was blessed with. And so I think this quote by Morey shows us the biggest tragedy in T-Mac's career. The man was simply not built to lead a team. Instead, he should have been the greatest second best player on a team of all time. If at any time in his prime he had paired with a true alpha dog, he would have won games, he would have won championships, he would have been remembered as an NBA legend. Instead, Tracy McGrady is just another huge what if in NBA history. And he's the perfect reminder that no matter how good a player is, he still needs other stars to win a championship. And thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it. I loved reminiscing about young T-Mac. When I was a kid, Tracy McGrady was actually my favorite player, so it honestly sucked to see him never reach the success that everyone knew he was capable of. But I guess that's just sports. That's just basketball. These things happen. Now, for you guys who are not yet subscribed, the basketball season is just around the corner. This channel is an NBA basketball channel, so I make videos like this. I look at NBA history. I do NBA what-ifs. I look at NBA conspiracies and I'm going to be covering the NBA all season. So if you love the NBA, make sure you subscribe and I'd love to have you here. For everyone who is subscribed and supporting me, thank you guys just so much. You know your support means the world to me. I cannot say it enough. And as always, my dudes, have an awesome day and cue the music.